thought for the day. You get what you are persistent at. You get to keep what you are consistent at. Welcome to 7 Minutes for Yourself. I'm Christina Ina, and I'm so glad you've joined me for what I believe will be 7 of the most enriching minutes of your day. Let's take this time to reconnect with ourselves and improve our well-being. In today's episode of 7 Minutes for Yourself, we are talking about leveraging loss to establish discipline. Have a listen. Those who have swords and know how to use them but keep them sheathed, will inherit the world. You should be a monster. You know, because everyone says, well, you should be harmless, virtuous. You shouldn't do anyone any harm. You should sheath your competitive instinct. You shouldn't try to win. You know, you you don't want to be too aggressive. You don't want to be too assertive. You want to take a back seat and all of that. It's like, no, wrong. You should be a monster, an absolute monster. And then you should learn how to control it. It's like, is there something wrong with being competitive? There's nothing wrong with it. There's something wrong with cheating. There's something wrong with being a tyrant. There's something wrong with winning unfairly. All of those things are bad. But you don't want people to win? What's the difference between trying to win and striving? You want to eradicate striving? Well, it's the uncomfortable feeling that people associate with losing. When they've personally experienced it, they look at losing as they've, they've been oppressed or they've been hurt. But what they don't understand is that is the motivation for growth. And one of the most beautiful things that I think a young person can get involved in is martial arts. Because martial arts teach you that in a way that very few things do. Important. One definition of a winner is someone who never let losing stop them. Yes. You know, and, and the idea that a single loss in a competition is somehow a defeat is completely insane. It's first of all, well, let's say you're a hockey player and you're a good player and you, and you lose the tournament. It's like, well, so what? You played the game. You're increasing your skills. It's like there's always next time. One of the things that I've also been informing people about is the idea that life isn't a game. It's a series of games. And the right ethic is to be the winner of the series of games. And part of that means you, well, you have to learn how to be a good loser because yes. you're not going to win every single game. But you also have to embrace those losses as learning experiences. And the people that have never lost are afraid of losing. Mm-hmm. They're afraid of learning. Mm-hmm. You're afraid of that feeling. That terrible feeling that you get from losing is so beneficial. It's aided me in so many ways. Like It's one of the reasons, also one of the reasons why I talk so openly about bombing on stage. And I, t- I do it with other comedians. Mm-hmm. I, I always want to tell people, yeah, I'm an established comedian. I've been a comedian for a long time. Let me tell you about like when I was two years in or five years in or, or four years ago. Like, let me tell you about some horrible moments on stage where it went wrong. Just so you understand, like those things took me to another place. Yeah. Because I realized I don't want to ever feel that feeling again. And so I ramped yeah. everything up. And then I went back to work and I went over my notebooks and I went over my my recordings and I figured out what I was doing wrong and, and I tried to improve upon it. But if, if it wasn't for that horrible, sick feeling, that's the same feeling you get when you get tapped out in jujitsu class. Same feeling you get when you lose a martial arts tournament or anything else. Losing is important. Well, you might also say, like, let's say that you could pick your le- you can pick your level of competition in life to some degree. Okay, so let's say you pick a level of competition where you're always winning. It's like, well, all that means is you've picked the wrong level of competition. Yes. Because, you know, like, let's say you're a grandmaster chess player and all you do is play amateurs. And every night you go home and congratulate yourself on what a genius you are because you just stomp these people left, right, and center. It's like, you're not a genius. You're dimwit. Right. What you should be doing is playing people who are beating you like... Well, as much as you can tolerate. Right. So maybe that's 40% of the time. Maybe it's 60% of the time. But that way, because to be a winner, you want to be disciplined. You want to know what you're doing. And then you want to be on the edge where your skills are being developed. And if you're going to be on the edge where your skills are going to be developed, you're, you're at a place where losing is always a possibility. Because otherwise you're not pushing yourself beyond your current capacity. Well, Nietzsche observed at one point that most of what people regard as morality is just cowardice. And what he meant by that was that people don't do bad things not because they're good, but because they're afraid to do the bad things. And then when they see people do the bad things, they're actually really deeply attracted by that because it speaks to part of them that could go beyond the rules. And that's actually a necessary part. It's a really necessary part. You don't make men safe by making them weak. 
In fact, they're much more dangerous when they're weak because they'll stab you in the back when they get the chance or take advantage of you when, you, when they get the chance. You make men safe, let's say, by making them strong and then by making sure that they're disciplined. Like, it's the men that have the most, what would you call it? It's not aggressive exactly, but we'll, we'll leave it at that. Aggressive and fearless temperaments that can be the best men. But it's like having a very powerful dog. You better civil, you better discipline it because otherwise it's going to be a monster. Break rules when necessary. Now, the question is, when is that necessary? Well, that's sort of the ultimate, ultimate ethical choice. Number one was learning how to fight. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I got into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and mixed martial arts, and I, and I learned how to fight. And now, all of a sudden, when I looked at other people, I, didn't, I wasn't posturing. I wasn't trying to pretend that I was tough. I, was, I knew that most people that I would encounter, I could de defeat in a physical altercation. Mm -hmm. That was number one. Number two is going into combat. Because even though you might be tough in a, in a street fight or in a, a fist fight with someone, when you're facing death, well, that's a whole nother level. And for me, going into combat, well, what was I going to act like? Was I going to be scared? Was I going to be a coward? Was I going to be scared of death? And when I went into combat, I wasn't. I was fine. I was okay with the fact that I could die, and, and I was okay with that. And I made good decisions and, and did what I was supposed to do and the last one was I got married and had kids because all of a sudden all these things these being aggressive and w working to fight and be able to destroy in an efficient way well then I took that and combined it with okay now I'm gonna take care of these my wife and our children and that's what I'm gonna do and my point in giving this speech was he was a guy that had learned how to fight he was a guy that had been in combat and now there was one more step to take, which was, okay, now you're going to get married and you're going to take care of these people. So it's interesting that, that once again, that dichotomy that, that you talk about, it fits perfectly into the, into the way I figured things out as a, as a guy that went to high school and joined the military. Better to understand it and not act it out than to not understand it at all. But the best is to act it out and understand it. Because then you can, you know, then, then the way that you represent the world and yourself is in accordance with the way that you act. And that's, that's, that's optimized. That concludes today's episode of 7 Minutes for Yourself. Please take a moment to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. Today and every day with your kiddo is a gift. Enjoy it. Thanks for tuning in.